What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the first ever Uncle Eric show here on Jackson Kruger Sports. Today, we're predicting Cam Newton's destination, Billy O'Brien getting races down in Houston, throwback unis, they're coming back to the NFL. Speaking of Houston, where's Deshaun Watson going to end up playing over the next couple years? And also the dumbest debate that's going on in New England right now. Check it out. <laughs> First off, thanks to Jackson Kruger for having me on here. We're just a bunch of dudes trying to talk some sports and avoid that cubicle. So if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe and follow the rest of our videos. First things first, Cam Newton, um, in the comments below, let me know, gun in your head, what team do you think he's going to end up playing for this coming, well, this coming season and in the future? So he was released, which is a, a huge shocker because he's got great character, championship pedigree. He's got some big time hustle moments out there and uh, big Super Bowl moments. But he's coming off a foot injury, which is huge for a mobile quarterback. He's had a couple shoulder surgeries over the past couple years. So who's going to take a chance on this dude? Who's going to throw him a bag? He's a stand-up guy, fashion icon, big on woman equality. Funny to hear female talk about routes like anyways this guy's stock is, is just plummeting like everything else that's out there for stocks and the team announced that he's open to seek a trade and cam was upset about this and, and funny enough this morning tmz released this uh leak, leaked audio from cam and the the carolina brass let's roll that tape over here hey you idiots i'm cam newton you want to replace me with this dude with two first names i'm a former mvp natty champ fashion icon go ahead and trade me dude Carolina will want your heads, I dare you. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, all right, Cam. So they called his bluff, and that's kind of what I thought the, the conversation probably went like. And I'm, I'm on Team Carolina here because you, you can't mislead a player like that and expect to have good relationships with, with future either free agents or future players. I really don't believe the team would have misled him that way and just would have thrown him out in the street just by social media posts. I think that's a little bit crazy. But Cam replied. He replied in symbols and hieroglyphics and just something weird. And yeah, no no teams wanted his contract. No team wanted to trade for Cam. That contract is, is way too expensive. So Carolina ended up releasing him. And in all seriousness, this dude's is still a good quarterback. Over the past full three seasons that he had, um, he averaged around 21 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. And you can't deny his raw talent. Big dude can run the rock. Um, he's probably one of the hardest dudes to tackle in the NFL, period. So there's going to be a market for him. It's just going to be a matter of, is he going to be a backup quarterback or is he, is he going to be a starter? So let's jump into some of the teams that might be able to grab him. Patriots, my hometown team, it, it makes sense in some ways other than the fact that the Patriots have like $2 million to deal with at this point in time. So not a lot of, not a lot of cap space and it still seems like a long shot, but if he's looking for a one-year deal and the possibility to start, and earn himself another long-term contract, I don't think it's crazy to, to take a huge pay cut and go to New England. If I'm in his position, I mean, what are your other options? I, I would rather go to New England, really kind of humble yourself, try to earn a starting spot within, within the Patriots organization. I know it's a really difficult schedule coming up, but there's not a better place to go than New England and work with Bill Belichick and uh, try to get yourself another long-term deal with another another team after that, and who knows who the Patriots would proceed with after. But um, I don't think it's that crazy to, to think that he may take a pay cut and come to New England. Another team that I, I really like and it has been thrown around quite often is the Jaguars because they have Minshew there. He's on a $2.7 million deal, and that's the, the whole contract. That's not even per year. So he's like an overpaid accountant at this point in time. I kind of feel bad for him. He's almost like broke. He might, might have a side job or something. But uh, my money's on the Jags at this point. I think it's a good fit for Cam. Uh, I think he can compete for a starting role there if it's not New England. And I just don't think New England's interested. My long shot team, though, is the Buffalo Bills. It's good to throw these out here once in a while because they're using a mobile quarterback in Josh Allen. There's similarities between those two dudes. Could bring in a little competition. Have uh, you know Cam there for a backup if it doesn't work out. And... You know, who knows, if Josh Allen gets his head ripped off by the Patriots defense again, can roll in Cam Newton and still have a shot to win that game. So, just a thought. I know it's crazy, but Buffalo Bills, don't rule them out. In other news, we got Bruce Arians was on the Dan Patrick Show talking about um, some things about some throwback jerseys. And this is what he said. Once the helmet rule changes next year, we might have some cream creamsicles and some throwbacks, which I think are the best uniforms in the league. This is a big deal to me. I love the throwback uniforms. The cream school jerseys, pretty gross in my opinion. The Steelers jerseys, pretty gross in my opinion as well. But bringing back, bringing back Patriot Pat is what I'm about. Seeing a different quarterback in that jersey is going to sting. 
but I, I love the throwbacks. Hey, let, let's get a little crazy. Let's throw some 90s jerseys in the mix, too. Speaking of the Patriots, I'll try to cool down with Patriots news on future shows here, but it's my allegiance. Tom Brady's been in the news quite a bit, and Seth Wickersham put a story out there that uh, kind of gave more context into why Brady was leaving, and here's a big piece of that story. After the Patriots lost to the Eagles in the Super Bowl, Brady was deeply dissatisfied. The offense had put up 613 yards with no punts. When Belichick addressed the team upon its return to Foxborough, Brady mostly stared straight down, barely glancing up at his coach. Brady told people in the building that he wasn't coming back. Needing distance, he detached himself from the team that spring. He left passive-aggressive comments on social media. He pleaded the fifth. He looked lost at the end of his fa Facebook docuseries, Tom vs. Time, saying of his passion, What are we doing this for? You got to have answers for those questions. So I think most of this is kind of a grab for eyeballs, and I completely understand it. But most of this, I think, is bogus. Like a quarterback looking down after he lost the Super Bowl is not that crazy. I don't remember any passive aggressive social media comments. Um, but there, there's a lot of things that have been coming out. And the, the one thing I know is you're all happy that Tom Brady is gone from New England. It's just a story that you were getting sick of, of them in the playoffs. Why won't you die? I really don't think that we'll ever know exactly why Tom Brady moved on from all of this. And I understand people are looking for one single answer, something that they could put in a box, put a bow on, and, and present it to people, say this is the reason why he left. Most likely was a mixture of a lot of different things. But who's going to be the Patriots quarterback in 2020? Jared Stidham, he's, he's shown some prom promise in preseason. He's had some flashes. I know Hook Cammy loves him. We'll put his video in the description below. He did a video for Jackson Kruger as well. He's still a pup, though. This is a squad that has the hardest schedule coming up based on preseason rankings, but it's a really difficult schedule. And is this a dude that can handle that type of pressure? Brian Hoyer coming back, I really think he's going to compete for the starting role in New England. I know people think I'm crazy for that, but we need a dude who's going to minimize mistakes. Belichick is building this team to, to have a really good offensive line, to be able to run the rock. It's going to be defensive-minded. You need a dude who can just hand off the ball and throw the ball and minimize mistakes, and I think Brian Hoyer gives you a really good chance at that. And Let's look at some of his stats right here. And Can we all agree that the Browns' stats, we can just get rid of those? And look at his Texans year. He, he was pretty impressive for the Texans. 19 touchdowns and 7 interceptions, 2,600 yards. And he was kind of a fill-in for uh, the 49ers and then, you know, the Bears as well. But this is a dude who is serviceable. And I think that's a good phrase to describe Brian Hoyer. He's a serviceable quarterback. I really think it's going to be Brian Hoyer who's going to be starting this league, starting this year off for the Patriots under center. Unless somebody else comes in, maybe Cam Newton or somebody else. I think Brian Hoyer knows this system. He's been around. He's, he's been training under Tom Brady and Bill Belichick for a while now. I think it's a very good possibility you're going to see Brian Hoyer playing for the Patriots, and they're, they're still going to compete. Next up, we got Bill O'Brien. Uh, Michael Irving was talking to DeAndre Hopkins, and uh, here's a quote from Michael Irving. DeAndre told me this, Irving said. O'Brien told DeAndre Hopkins, hey, this the last time that I had to have a meeting like this, it was with Aaron Hernandez, Hopkins said. Michael, that blew my mind that he would ever bring that up. I'd never been in any trouble. I don't know why he would equate me with Aaron Hernandez. And from there, the meeting just deteriorated, Hopkins said. O'Brien got into talking about DeAndre Hopkins. He has a few kids from different women. O'Brien told DeAndre that he doesn't uh, like that he has baby mamas around sometimes. Okay, so DeAndre recently came out on Twitter and said, this has been blown way out of proportion. As I've said before, I enjoyed uh, and I'm proud of my time with the Texans. I have the utmost respect for Coach O'Brien and that will not change. Now I'm ready to play for the Cardinals, which is just a good PR move by DeAndre Hopkins. I don't think he's doing anything else than um, just playing the classy card, which is the best thing to do. I mean, his time is over. He's not going to get anything out of trashing his former team or his former coach, even if he felt like he was wronged. Very smart move by DeAndre, but uh, losing DeAndre for a washed up running back in a second rounder is a really tough look for O'Brien. Sounds like there was a power struggle in there and O'Brien really could not contain DeAndre for a number of reasons, for whatever reasons. And now Deshaun is going to be thrown to a bunch of number twos and one Bs at the, at the very best. And so what does this mean for Deshaun Watson? Um, first off, he liked this tweet from uh, some random guy about Bill Belichick. It's, it's a meme calling him. Also quoted a Drake lyric. I don't know how I'm going to make it out of here clean. Can't even keep track of the plays of the other team. Play, plays, players? Iconic duos rip apart and split at the seam. So 
everybody's kind of questioning what's going on with Deshaun Watson. Is he still bought into the Texas system? And is he going to be on the move? Probably not. I mean, this is the final year of his rookie deal, and the Texans actually hold an option for next year. And on top of that, they'll probably franchise him if he's going to stick around. So what's going to need to happen is some kind of a blow up or Deshaun is going to have to essentially just demand a trade, which isn't really that crazy to think about with the way that things are going. And there's nothing like getting a taste of the playoffs, having 10 wins and then taking a huge step back because your coach just screwed things up with your best wide receiver. He may be on the market next year. If it's not with the Patriots, it may be with somebody else. Um, I doubt the Texans would want to trade him within the AFC, but I mean, if you can get Stidham in return, it's definitely a possibility. All right, last thing, hot topic of discussion. I want you guys to give me your opinion on this because this is absolute crazy talk that's happening internally in New England. A lot of, a lot of debates going on as if New England fans would root for Tom Brady down in Tampa Bay. And to take it a step further, there's people that want Tom Brady to win a ring over the Patriots. So if they ended up meeting up in the Super Bowl, there's a lot of people that are saying that they would root for Tom Brady in that matchup, which I think is crazy town. Um, I kind of hope that he just wins the division and then he gets bounced in the first round. You know, he has like kind of like an Eagles Super Bowl type thing, throws for 600 yards and then that defense ends up screwing it up for him, which is not that crazy to, to predict. But let me know in the comments below, uh, do you think those fans have a legit argument in, in rooting for Tom Brady and wanting Tom to stick at the bill? But anyways, thanks for watching the first episode of the Uncle Eric show. I'm drinking some some water, no free ads. This is not a seltzer of any kind. No free ads. Um, if you enjoyed this video, if you have any suggestions for me, hit me in the comments below. Thanks to Jackson Kruger for having me. And um, you know, stay safe out there with everything going on. Cheers everybody.